Good morning and welcome to this week's service of the Online Missional Church through the Northwest Texas Conference. We are so glad that you have joined us this morning for worship. Again, we are thrilled to have Bishop Nunn with us today bringing our sermon about faith and how we can step a little bit farther, a little bit deeper, launching our faith farther than we've ever gone before. So if you are with us for the first time, or maybe you've watched for a while, but you haven't filled out a Connect card, or maybe you watch every week, we'd love for you to fill out a Connect card through the link on your screen that lets us know you're here, but that also is a way to let us know how we can help connect you to groups with resources around you and pray for you. Um, Pastor Jeff and Pastor Dave are here for pastoral care, however you may need them. We are so thankful to have been on this journey together as the Online Missional Church. Um, so fill out that Connect card, let us know how we can help you, and we are excited to hear again later on in the service what Bishop Nunn has in store. So let us at this time prepare our hearts for the word, for worship this morning, and let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, I just thank you that above all, you meet us where we are. God, that you look past what we've done. God, that you look to where you are calling us to. Lord, we just ask that you continue to show us your mercies and your grace. God, that you continue to bring healing to our hearts and our churches. God, that you continue to show us where your kingdom here on earth we are called to be and to serve. God, let our hearts break for what breaks yours. Lord, teach us and lead us where you are calling. And it's together that we pray the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
scripture reading today is from the Gospel of John, the 21st chapter, and I'll be reading the 6th through 9th verses, the 15th verse, and then verses 20 and 21. Would you hear these words? Jesus said, Cast your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they did, and there were so many fish that they couldn't haul in their net. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he wrapped his coat around himself, for he was naked, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed on the, in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they weren't far from shore, only about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. Now I'm going to skip ahead to uh, verse 15. When they finished eating breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And now I'll skip to verse 20 and 21. Peter turned around and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. This was the one who had leaned against Jesus at the meal and asked, Lord, who is it to betray you? When Jesus saw this disciple, he said, Lord, what about him? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to continue talking about faith today. We had a wonderful annual conference uh, some weeks ago, and, uh, and then it's been my privilege to be on the on on these uh, uh, broadcasts uh, to be able to share my faith a little bit with you in the summer. So I hope you're finding it encouraging and something to think about and challenging. And most of all, I'm praying that God is speaking to your heart uh, through this medium. Uh, this is a familiar story. It's after the resurrection. <clears throat> the disciples have fished all night. They caught nothing. Jesus is on the shore, and he asks them, have you caught anything? And you know, a fisherman's biggest lie is to say yes when they caught nothing. So at least they were truthful. They said, no, we haven't caught anything. And Jesus says to them, cast your nets on the other side. Don't we get stuck in a rut sometime? Casting our nets on the same side of the boat, of the boat, we get in in the same old, same old, the ruts that we live in and get in, and we wonder why we work so hard and yet we have so little fruit for it. And here Jesus is on the shore with perspective, and he just says, "Try the other side. Try the other thing. Try something new." Well, they did it, and they were award, rewarded with a super big catch, so much so they could barely get it to shore. Simon Peter, that impulsive disciple, uh, when he realizes that it's Jesus, he's, he's just excited. And, uh, and it says he grabbed his robe and he jumped in the water, for he was naked. Well... You know, it was hot. I don't blame Peter for, for you know, fishing without any clothes on. After all, the fish didn't wear any clothes, so why should Peter? But I was thinking, where have I seen this before? Of course, Peter does impulsive stuff, but in the very opening book of the Bible in Genesis, here the man and the woman have disobeyed God, and they realize they were naked, and they hid themselves. Peter realizes, I'm naked, and he grabs his cloak to hide himself. Really, all that saying is that every time we fall short, we go back to that beginning point where we're vulnerable, where we want to hide, where we want to somehow escape uh, from the microscope that seems to be upon us. 
and usually it's the microscope of our own judgment uh, that we, uh, we stand under. But Peter jumps in that water. It didn't say he swam ahead of the boat. I don't know what he did. He ended up on the shore, obviously, because he didn't drown. But was he hiding? Was he postponing a meeting with Jesus? What was he doing? We don't really know. And for today, the question is, what are we doing? Have we realized that we are exposed, vulnerable? Has something happened in our lives that is causing us some grief and heartache? Do we feel like we've done something to separate us from God's love somehow? Are we trying to hide from God? Do we just cover it up and compensate by, by either hiding or being angry or being vengeful? There are a lot of ways we cope. A lot of ways we cope. So they end up at the shore. They all get on shore, and here is Jesus. And uh, he has got a fire ready for the disciples. It's not just any fire, though. It's a charcoal fire. Now, charcoal fires were something that were done every day, but the last time a charcoal fire is, is mentioned in Scripture is the, is the fire that Jesus stood beside when he betrayed Jesus three times, and he said, I don't know him. And so Jesus had a charcoal fire. Because Peter's last memory of being by charcoal fire was to deny even knowing Jesus. And now here he is again, standing in the same place. In the words of the great Yogi Berra, it's deja vu all over again. He's at the same spot. And he cannot help but remember the last time he was looking at Jesus and standing by the charcoal fire, he behaved in a way that he was now ashamed of. Shame and guilt can destroy our lives. And Jesus wasn't going to let that happen to Peter, and Jesus doesn't want to let that happen to us. Because Jesus' response was not to condemn Peter, not to say, Peter, you remember this fire? You know, I'm going to push you in it and punish you. I'm going to make you suffer because you denied me. You didn't walk with me when I needed you the most. Jesus didn't say any of that stuff. But shame and guilt will condemn us. Even though Jesus didn't say it, we stand condemned within ourselves. The work of Jesus is a work not to condemn, but to redeem. And Jesus' work of redemption is so masterful. They're by that fire. And Jesus asked Peter a series of three questions. They're so simple. Do you love me? And Peter I'm sure is thinking, and probably I'm projecting Peter's thoughts on my own, Lord, you know I love you. Look at all this stuff I've done for you all my life. I've followed you since I've been young. I answered your call to ministry. I went to seminary. I served in churches, and I've, I've done all this stuff. Don't you know, Lord, I love you? Look at what I've done. Don't you know I've loved you? It's not just what we do, it's who we are. And so Jesus asked again, Simon Peter, do you love me? And he can't respond with just a yes, I do. He has to respond and say, Lord, you know all things. You know my heart. You know my intentions. You know everything about me. You know that I love you. And Jesus one more time asked Peter, do you love me? 
I think Jesus asked three times because Peter denied Jesus three times and he wanted to clear the deck entirely. And Peter's response again was, yes, Lord, you know, you know I love you. We live in a tough time today on many levels. We've been through a lot as a church. The whole question can be, do you love us, Lord? Um, are you here, Lord? And the answer is yes. Yes. But Jesus doesn't stop with just a yes. He says, feed my lambs or feed my sheep. And with those of us in the United Methodist Church, Jesus doesn't just say, yes, I love you. Jesus says, yes, I love you and feed. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Help your brothers and sisters. Empower them to be healthy. To grab a vision to serve somebody else. To be lifted up out of a, a torment of self-centeredness. Jesus loves us and Jesus calls us. Feed the lambs and feed the sheep. Jesus and Peter were satisfied that reconciliation had occurred. That's always the way with Jesus. And he says to Peter simply this, follow me. And so Peter, in his characteristic impulsivity, he, he's going to follow Jesus. He's looking straight at Jesus. But as soon as Jesus says, follow me, Peter takes his eyes off Jesus. How can you follow Jesus when you take your eyes off of him? But he takes his eyes off Jesus, looks on the disciple John, and says, what about him? We lose the ability to follow Jesus when we take our eyes off of Jesus and put them on the neighbor and say, what about them? And, P and Jesus responds to Peter, Essentially, this is my paraphrase, that's none of your business. Sometimes we get so concerned about minding the business of our brothers and sisters, we forget that we too need to follow Jesus. We think we are so close to him that we can look around and somehow be the moral police or the moral correctors of everybody else around us in the world who isn't doing things the way we think they ought to be done. That's exactly what Jesus is warning Peter about. Don't worry about him. You follow me. That's a good word for the church today. Don't worry about everybody else around us. Don't worry about yesterday because yesterday's gone. Be right with the Lord. Follow Jesus. Peter started out fishing. He wanted to go back to his old way of life without Jesus. But they caught so many fish that Peter couldn't. He hid himself by grabbing his coat and jumping into the, to the lake because he didn't have any clothes on. He was exposed. He was vulnerable. He was naked. And then when he got to the shore, here's this fire that takes him back to that awful, fateful night when Jesus was arrested and Peter betrayed him. There's hope today because Jesus meets us at that very lowest point in our lives. And he takes us back to our own charcoal fires. What are we struggling with? What are we carrying? Where is there shame or guilt that's marring our lives? 
That's where Jesus takes us to. That's where he asks us, not, what did you do? Jesus asks simply, do you love me? Do you love me? And will you take care of the people around you for me? That's what he's asking of us. It's hard for us to grasp it. Because like Peter, we hear the words of forgiveness. We know we're reinstated. But it's so easy to look at that neighbor and say, what about them? Bernard de Clairvaux wrote a little book called The Steps Toward Humility. Um, they, his disciples wanted him to write it and call it The Steps Toward Pride, but Bernard reversed it. And the final step toward humility is to be able to look after our own souls and not the souls of everybody else in a judgmental way. In a caring way, yes. In a judgmental way, no. And that's the distinction I want to draw at the end of this story. That Peter was looking at John. He was wanting to know how John would die, you know, all these theoretical things. It doesn't matter what it is, but it distracted him from Jesus. It was judgmental. It was invasive. It was not his business. But Jesus, in a word, said, don't worry about him. Follow me. Will you follow Jesus today? Amen. Thank you.